Hello citizens of cyberspace and prospective cubers. What I'm going to show you is how to solve one of these bad boys. The Rubik's Cube. That's right, um, despite being unbelievably frustrating at times, they have sold somewhere around 350 million units, which more or less makes them the world's most popular toy. And when we're done here, hopefully you'll be able to pick one up, scrambled, solve it, and then proudly announce that was easy. That was a piece of cake. Because really, solving a cube is not very difficult. The difficulty comes when you want to start solving it quickly and in fewer and fewer moves. So solving a cube, not terribly hard. Solving it quickly, that's where it gets tricky. Ooh, I rhymed. Um, there are many, many tutorials out there on how to solve a cube, but I found the problem with a lot of them uh, was that they basically just present you with a case, uh, give you the algorithm for the case, and usually just in notation, and say memorize, memorize this algorithm, execute it here. And when you're just starting out learning the cube, that's usually very difficult to learn with because it doesn't really explain what's going on. It doesn't really help you in any way to memorize the algorithms because a lot of the beginner algorithms can actually be visualized quite clearly. clearly. So what I'm going to show you here today is uh, some methods and mnemonics you can use to help you better memorize and more easily m memorize the algorithms and hopefully give you a better understanding of the cube while we're at it. Uh, now, there are several different uh, methods out there for solving the cube. There even are variations of the beginner method and different types of beginner methods. And the one I'm going to be showing you is basically the one that uses the fewest algorithms and is the simplest. Uh, if you're looking to get into speed cubing, uh, then there's a better method out there and uh, it was done by a person, uh, Bad Mephisto is his username on YouTube. And his beginner method is basically a very stripped down uh, version of the Friedrich method, which is one of the most popular speed solving methods out there. So if you're looking to learn the cube and go into speed solving, you're probably better off with uh, learning that instead. Uh, there are more algorithms to learn and it is a steeper learning curve, but you'll be much better prepared to move into full Friedrich method uh, when you start speed solving. Now, before we start, I'm going to get into some of the cube mechanics so you understand how it works. And I have another cube here. Uh, I'm going to pull out a row of cubies. You can try this with your cube too. But if you have a store-bought cube, chances are it's going to be much stiffer and much more difficult to do so. Uh, start by uh, just pulling out an edge and then working your way out from there. Now, <clears throat> you'll notice the cube has these different cubies. There are these, the corner pieces. There's eight of those and the edge pieces, there's 12 of those, as well as the center and the core, which the centers are attached to. Now when you're solving a cube, you don't want to think of the cube in terms of faces or stickered faces. Uh, you'll never be able to move just one stickered face around. You're gonna to have to move a few around, or at least move the pieces and then, or rotate the pieces. So several faces are gonna change at once. So don't think of the cube in just terms of stickered faces. You're gonna think in cubies instead, and these are the cubies. Now, if I finish disassembling the cube here, I'll show you the core and the centers as well. And the centers, they always stay in the same place relative to each other. They're not going to move around the same way the cubies do. So as you can see here, here's a core. It's just like a six-spoke core with the centers attached. As you can see, they move relative to each other, but you can't like move one around by itself. It just turns. That's it. Uh, the white is always going to be opposite of the yellow center. Uh, green and blue are going to be opposite, and red and orange are going to be opposite. And that's never going to change. So keep in mind the centers are always going to stay in the same place. So it, it acts as a very useful guide when solving the cube. Now, uh, before we actually get into how, how to solve a cube and the instructions, I'm just going to give you a quick example of, uh, of the method we're going to use here. And the method starts out, the first thing you're going to do is pick a side. I almost always start with white. Next thing the method does is we're going to get the cross on that side. So I'll do that here. Here we go. We have the cross on the white side. All the edge pieces are correctly aligned too. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to put the corners into place. So we have the first layer. And there you go. Now we have the first layer of this cube. All the corners are in place and they're all in the right place too. Next thing after that is put the edges in the place to form the first two layers. So I'll do that here.
and once you have the edges in place like I said you're gonna have the first two layers and all you're gonna have to do after that is the last layer so there we go first two layers all done now after that all we have is the last layer and the first thing you're gonna want to do is make the cross here we already have it so I don't have to do anything but just for sake of example I'll make the cross see here we have a line and now we have a cross next thing after that is to make sure the cross pieces are in the right place and now they are we have the cross pieces in the right place after that the corner pieces in the right place and there we go all the corner pieces are in the right place now we have to orient the corner pieces simple and symphony the cube is done seven steps uh, more or less four or so algorithms you'll need to know so let's get to it next video step one forming the cross